we souls we give regard to each one's advice and when we give regard to each one's advice we receive regard now we must understand one thing that although the truth is you are not your opinion yes but when we live in a body conscious world we think i am my opinion yes and when you reject someone's opinion then they feel rejected and feeling rejected is a very sorrowful experience so since we are knowledgeful souls we don't give sorrow we understand that every soul is very attached to their opinion and although you know you might feel that their opinion is not right or it is of no value or it is uh, you know not useful but when you reject somebody's opinion it is a form of giving hurt and they take it as insult so an aspect of giving regard is also not to reject anybody's advice now what do you do when you don't reject anybody's advice do you take that advice and start implementing it no so everybody is entitled to their opinion and you are also entitled to yours so you will do your own thing but just use the right language and have the right attitude that you know and uh, the attitude is very important because the attitude gets conveyed more than the language so we must have the attitude that every soul is entitled to their opinion and they are having an opinion which may be different from mine but you know everybody is different and it's okay and when you have that then you don't reject or you are not insulting them and the law says that you receive the equal and opposite of the energy that you give so when you give regard you will receive regard so when you reject they reject and have you seen that <coughs> if you've experimented with these things then you would know that uh, you know even if there is a small child or there is somebody who works as a paid employee for you and now in the management there is one person who they have a good relationship with and there is another person who they do who they don't have a good relationship with and in case of parents also you know sometimes there is one parent who the child holds as the enemy and another parent who is very dear to the child and in most of these cases you know what you observe is there is a lack of regard from the elder one so it could be a parent it could be somebody in the management and there is this sense of false pride that you know i know better 
maybe you know better maybe you are more experienced maybe that is true on many levels but when you uh, when you feel very entitled that i feel i am better and i know better then sometimes what you do is you don't take cognizance of the spiritual laws and then you start having an attitude towards the other person that you are wrong that you are lowly or that you are you know just not intelligent enough or that you are not experienced enough and then in your words also <coughs> so whatever is there in your thoughts in your buddhi will be conveyed through words also and then your words even if you don't recognize it your words are very insulting to the other and you might take a lot of pride in the way you speak or you know uh, maybe uh, you you think it is funny but uh, you start uh, you know you are doing something that is making the other person feel insulted now what happens is in such a scenario you may choose to insult somebody you may choose to disregard somebody but eventually what happens is when you say you are wrong and when you say your opinion doesn't matter or you say you are a fool then the other other soul the the one at the receiving end they also start radiating the same energy back to you and although you might feel <coughs> that you are the most intelligent experienced and right person in the world in the opinion of that soul you are also a fool you are also somebody who knows nothing and you are also somebody who is wrong all the time and then you know this vicious cycle continues and in such a scenario what works what suffers is the atmosphere and the work that needs to be done and this is why baba says and of course there is karmic account involved and creation of vikarma and uh, all of that is happening so baba says you must understand that <coughs> every soul however much you think you are right they also think they are right in their own way so you have to when you engage with souls you have to have this attitude that every soul is right in their own way and every soul is entitled to their opinion and even if you take a decision to not implement somebody's opinion you must hear them out with regard and not reject them while you are hearing them out and just hear them out with regard also take a moment to consider you know maybe they are speaking something which you have omitted or you have not uh, you know seen in that moment and take a moment to consider and even if you don't accept their advice you must not reject them and um this is one aspect of giving regard and when you give regard you receive regard and you see that uh when you work in a group regard is the most important thing so in a sangathan in a family in a group in any kind of you know uh uh in somewhere where 10 people or 100 or 1000 are coming together and doing something collectively regard is very very important because when there is no regard then there is a fragmentation and the group is broken and in such an atmosphere growth doesn't take place because 
when somebody is feeling hurt or they are feeling insulted, then the vibration and the atmosphere that is created there is a very low energy vibration. And in that vibration, growth is very difficult to happen. So, this is something that I have, I have experienced and I understand and this is how it works. Now, there is another aspect to this which I don't want to omit. Now, you see that Baba teaches us spiritual laws and Baba teaches us karma and you know there are uh, so there are two aspects of karma one thing is what you should do yes one thing is when you are the doer then you have to understand the philosophy of karma and make choices according to the law of karma. But there is another aspect to the law of karma where you are not the doer but you are the one who has to respond to somebody's actions. And in that case also you know you have to respond knowledgefully. So just like you know you have the knowledge that every soul is very attached to their opinion. So, you do not reject their opinion because then they feel insulted and rejected. So, when you have to make the choice of karma, you use this understanding. But what if somebody is not giving you regard? Somebody is always rejecting your opinion then at that time you do not use this law that you know it is normal and natural to feel insulted when somebody uh, rejects your opinion because you are a knowledgeful soul and you know that you are not your opinion. Got it? So, you know sir, karma is a very double edged sword. So, sometimes you know um, you think that you must you it is okay to expect the behavior that you extend to others, but you must understand that karma is created when you do something and karma is created when you respond to something. And if when you do something you make the choices that your karma is in accordance with spiritual laws, but when you are in the receiving end of something and you think that the other person must behave according to spiritual laws, then you make a mistake. So, you have to be knowledgeful in responding and you have to be knowledgeful in acting. So, when you interpret the slogan in this way, so then you have to understand that when it comes to you giving regard, you must give regard because that is good karma, not insulting somebody, not rejecting anybody's advice and opinion, that is good karma because neglecting, rejecting and attaching are sins. So, you have understood that uh, these are sins, so you refrain from those sins. But what when somebody else is rejecting your opinion or someone else is you know always telling you that you are wrong and I am right and somebody is disregarding your advice then you do not say that you know even God says that you should not <laughs> reject anybody's advice and see this person is such a bad a person and doing bad karma all the time and rejecting my advice because if you thought like that 
then you would create negative thoughts, negative feelings and that would be a bad karma on your part. So, in that situation you must understand that I have the knowledge that I am not my opinion. And when somebody is rejecting the opinion or the advice, then they are rejecting the advice, not me. I am much more than the advice that I am giving. And anyways, you know, everybody will behave according to their sanskar. So if somebody has a sanskar of rejecting, they will do that. And it is okay. And in that situation, I have to be in self-honor. Yes. And you might face situations in your life where, you know, you you are giving an advice which will, which in your opinion is very good and very helpful and it will bring very good results. But somebody is prejudiced and they reject your advice and they take the advice of somebody else and they suffer losses also because of that but they keep rejecting you and appreciating the other in such a place you have to have a lot of self-respect that even if somebody rejects me God accepts me and anyways I am not my opinion so if somebody rejected an opinion that doesn't mean mean they rejected me because they don't know me and the one who knows me loves me so I don't have to feel rejected. So you have to have this kind of self-respect in this scenario and uh, even if you know your advice is rejected do not refrain from giving your advice. You know, if you are asked, give it again and again. Even if it is rejected, you do the right thing. They rejected their choice. You give your opinion. Don't be vehement about it. Don't expect that it should be accepted. But do the needful. You are part of the group. You have to give your opinion because, uh, you know, it's your duty to ensure that you know, you give whatever is your duty to give at that point. And even if it is rejected, you understand that it's okay because everybody has their own sanskar. And also, Baba loves me, Baba knows me. So, it doesn't matter if somebody doesn't accept the advice. So, when we understand karmic philosophy, one thing you have to understand very clearly is, when you make your choice of karma about how to act and how to respond, both of them have to be knowledgeful. And the point of knowledge that you use in the two places could be very different at different points of time. Yes, so if you use the same point of knowledge that you know, uh, people feel insulted when their advice is rejected and you think that you know it is okay that I am feeling insulted because God also says that that's not the right point to use at that time because we are children of God we are studying from Baba and I know that I am a soul and I am not my body or my advice or my looks or my designation or my label or my religion or my relationships. I am a soul loved by God and that is all that matters. So this is something about what Baba says today. And then today Baba says that, you know, we, uh, so there is this thing in Bhakti which is called uh, Gyan, Bhakti and Vairag. So in English it is translated as knowledge, devotion and disinterest and the meaning of that is that there is half a cycle where you don't remember knowledge 
but your sanskars are knowledgeful and you behave knowledgefully according to your sanskars so half the cycle is about knowledge then the from the copper age to the iron age there is devotion and then there is disinterest so when you lose interest in devotion and there are two paths of disinterest so one path of disinterest is the path that the sannyasis take and uh, they are, they become disinterested in their family or in their household and because they become disinterested in their household they leave the household yes but baba says you also when you come to knowledge you also first become disinterested and then you come into knowledge so after bhakti after devotion there has to be disinterest and then there is knowledge but baba says for you to imbibe knowledge you have to be disinterested in the whole world so your path of disinterest is being disinterested in everything in the old world including the body relationships everything you have deep disinterest in everything but what is the foundation of our disinterest the foundation of our disinterest is we understand we know and we kind of we are very sure about the fact that everything is going to you know going towards destruction sab vinash hone wala hai so we have deep faith in this knowledge that baba has given us that everything you see through these eyes is going to be destructed so because we have deep faith in the coming destruction that's why we have disinterest in the old world because everything of the old world is going to just perish the body and everything that you can see from the eyes do you have faith that everything that you see through these two eyes is going to perish do you have faith in it and if you have faith in that then you have disinterest in the old world and you have interest in knowledge and only then you can imbibe knowledge because you know you don't you don't pay attention to knowledge until you think that your strength and support lies in the old world but when you understand that nothing and no one of the old world is going to serve you you understand that nothing is going to become your strength and support everything is just perishing on its way to perish then you start thinking about knowledge and then you start building you know your relationship with baba and you start thinking about having a relationship with the imperishables that is the soul and baba and um, th- at that time you start imbibing knowledge so uh, the important thing is do i have faith that everything that i see with the eyes is going to perish and when you know that then you don't have any attachment to anything that you see with the eyes because you know it's going to go away but what is the form of disinterest so what do you do you do you get depressed about it 
or uh, so you know when you start believing that everything is perishing do you start feeling sad about it or do you just start throwing everything away because anyway it's it's perishable so do you start uh, so do you think that you know i should kill my own body because anyway it's going to <laughs> you know die or what do you start doing as an expression of this disinterest because you know uh, there was this one mata and um, she had come um, after to the center after covid and um, she when she came to the center she used to just, just keep crying you know tears used to just keep uh, flowing down and she wouldn't stop crying and when i asked her she said that uh, i had covid during the second wave and i almost died she said it's like i was i just died and came back it was something like that and then she said from that time onwards i feel like why am i living if death is such a truth and i just feel like you know i can die any moment so i have lost interest in life and i feel like uh, what is life about if death is such a big reality so you see that sometimes you understand many things but when you don't have knowledge you cannot process it right so baba tells us that you understand that everything here is perishable but then it is perishable and then you are eternal so everything that you have is perishable but you are not perishable you are eternal and you will go on your onward journey so when whatever you see with these eyes will perish even then you will go and have something new so you know in the gita there is a very good saying that you know whatever is will perish but then something that is not will come so you know you lose what you have but then you get what you don't have today that's the law so you understand both these things and you understand that kaliyug is going away and satyug is coming so you don't attach your heart with something that is going away but you have deep interest in creating a fortune for yourself in the world that is coming and then what do you do you start using everything that you have today everything that you know that is going to perish in such a manner on shrimat that you do something that is called making good or you know saphal karna so when you you do this act of safal karna today which is you put it to good use in seva then you get a multifold of it in your next birth so baba says your form of disinterest is not leaving everything behind but your form of disinterest is using it fruitfully while you live so that you can get it after you leave this body you know multiplied many times so this is how we understand disinterest so i understand that this body is anyway is going to die so let me you know just do whatever seva i can do through this body or my wealth is anyway is going to perish so let me use all the wealth to create a new world so baba says that this is how use your attitude becomes 
when you have disinterest and in this act of disinterest Baba says that you know that in the end there is this very beautiful saying in Hindi that Kinki Dabi Rehegi Dhul Me, which is somebody's wealth and treasures will turn to dust. Some people's wealth and treasure will be confiscated by the government. Some people will lose everything in natural calamities. Some people will lose all their wealth because it will be looted by thieves. But those who use everything they have fruitfully before Vinash, they will get it multiplied several times in Satyuk. So Baba says, you must use everything that you have in, on Srimat now so that you get it multiplied many times in the new birth. So, this is the aspect of disinterest that we have. And in today's Murli, Baba says that, you know, when there is a natural calamity or whenever there is uh, something going wrong and, you know, especially in terms in, in natural calamities, at that time, what happens is thieves become very active and they will just loot everything that you have. And I think, you know, uh, these days anyways, all our money is digital currency. So if the internet comes crashing down, then what money have you got? Nothing. <laughs> no record, no money. So, if you look at it that way, so everything is going to perish. Only that which you use in Yajna Seva, that's going to give you a return. So, Baba says, when you have, when we children have disinterest, we are very interested in using up everything that we have for world benefit or Vishwa Seva. So, this is something that Baba is telling today. And then there is another thing that Baba is saying, which is, you know, never, um, never take weak thoughts. And Baba especially mentions, you know, that sometimes what children do is, when you see something happening to somebody, you know, something that um, is not very happy to look at. You see it happening to somebody, then you start thinking that maybe this can happen to me also. Yes, and you start creating weak thoughts. And um, you know that uh, we, we are very body conscious. So, when we are body conscious, we identify with other souls and their karmic journeys because of body consciousness. So, let's say you are a government employee and then some government employee is being framed for something, you know, some wrong deed. Maybe you also trust that they didn't do it but you think that that's a wrong thing that's happening to them. And then you start thinking, oh my God, if this happened to me. Yes. And that is creating a very weak thought. So you must understand that I am under the canopy of God and I am, I always have great zeal and enthusiasm and I have deep faith that my future is very good and bright. And Baba says that you must check your thoughts and always ensure that your thoughts are filled with positivity, with zeal and enthusiasm. And you feel that you are under the canopy of Baba. 
because many a times because you are body conscious you start identifying with somebody so you know when you think that um, we are brothers or sisters or uh, we belong to the same family and some member of the family has a disease and then you start thinking oh if I had the same disease so you know that's a weak thought so you are an individual soul and your karmic journey is very different from everyone else's karmic journey you are under the canopy of Shiv Baba and you must never forget this and let all your thoughts be full of hope, faith, uh, you know, uh, zeal, enthusiasm never allow your thoughts to be weak and you know Baba says that the stage of fortunate souls can never be influenced or attracted by others and thereby come down okay so when you are influenced and attracted by others and come down that's a sign of misfortune so we are fortunate children we shouldn't get influenced by other people's karmic journey and we shouldn't create thoughts that are weak and Baba talks about courage never let go of courage and what is an act of courage an act of courage is taking a thought of zeal and enthusiasm when there is every reason you know when the surrounding around you um, is kind of giving you every possibility to think negative so you know the first step of courage is taking a powerful purposeful positive thought in the face of a weak atmosphere so Baba says uh, always have this step of courage never allow your thoughts to be weak and Baba says never look back at your past weakness also so not just at other people's weaknesses but do not identify with your past weakness also so you know there was this one brother and he had come to me and he told that I have I was an addict an alcohol addict for 15 years but then I gave up addiction and then uh, now I am I have not touched alcohol for the last five years but I always have this fear that maybe I will turn into an addict again so you see these fears because you know thoughts become things so even you don't have to identify with anybody else you don't have to identify with your own past also because Baba says now this is a new birth new life so leave everything behind leave everything that happened in the past let it be in the past and just embrace this life and know that you are under Baba's canopy and only good things can happen to you and never create a weak thought even if you get a weak thought have that step of courage and convert it into a thought of zeal and enthusiasm okay om shanti 